We are back for another video. Today, we're going to talk about how innovative technologies are transforming our health in a good way, in a bad way, in neutral way, whatever the hell is happening. Because I feel like it's a topic that needs to be touched on because we have advanced in our technology over the last couple hundred years drastically. Not even a couple hundred years, like 10, 15 years ago, we didn't have technologies that we have now that a lot of people don't even recognize. Like when I was growing up, there were no mobile phones. There was now no such thing. Whereas now we can access every single person and any place in the planet if we wanted to. Uh, so uh, let's dig into what we see is most common things that we see in technology uh, advancements and what we can't kind of live without. Let's say TVs, radios, microwaves, you name it. Wi-Fi, obviously, is the most common one. And how is it affecting our health? Yeah, yeah. So, <clears throat> again, one of the, the – you you see this everywhere, right? Especially – let's talk a little bit about, about Wi-Fi. Everything now, everything is Wi-Fi enabled, right? Because we've essentially figured out that we can retrofit any part of technology that we want to it any home even before you know just like you mentioned right 10 years ago um you me and you wouldn't be having this conversation so easily right now it, it just wouldn't be happening uh, yeah. because the technology didn't really uh, exist um so once there was like an upgrade on how well wi-fi worked everybody in just about every industry wanted to figure out how to exploit it without thinking about the consequences right so i'm gonna i'm gonna lay out a scenario that's very common especially in the u.s that actually may be affecting your health right and that is retrofitting security systems right the security systems have have exploded especially like in companies that like offer it right and people come knock your door do you want a security system etc and and people are like well you know that's expensive I'm like well it's not really that expensive uh you know in in one hour or two we can have your whole house outfitted with sensors on all your windows all your doors have four or five cameras at all your doors and we can all fit it through there uh, as long as you have Wi-Fi, right? And the reason is because now they don't have to run any wires, right? So now they just are charging you for the devices and no labor, essentially. That makes the price attractive and, you know, you're like, oh, okay, great, I'll do that, right? Not thinking about every single device. So, so a common house is going to have a front door, a back door, and, I don't know, five, six windows, right? And you're probably going to want a doorbell camera. So right there, uh, you're you're going to have upwards of a dozen devices now, almost immediately overnight, Wi-Fi enabled, pinging your Wi-Fi router and inducing uh, 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 wanting feedback from your Wi-Fi every single night while you sleep. Right? It may make you feel safe as far as having a security system, and I'm not saying that concept is wrong. But what I am saying is the way that they got into implemented right then and there immediately upped the light environment while you sleep. Because Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, any wireless communication device is light that you can't see. Just like UVA and UVB and infrared light are light that comes from the sun that you physically can't see. If, if you wanted to actually see UVA light, you would need an actual uh, camera that's specifically able to sense uva light you physically can't see that me you and i can only see the colors of the rainbow right uh violet through through red or blue through red uh, but uva and uvb are below the blue the blue spectrum and the infrared is above the red spectrum so you physically can't see those wi-fi is no different wi-fi is on the past uh below the the uva and uv light spectrum it is essentially a light source that you've turned on that never turns off your eyes can't see it but your skin and your cells can sense it the whole time so immediately you can you can start disrupting sleep in that way that's one of the biggest ones right like because the moment you disrupt sleep you start to disrupt apoptosis and autophagy right a lot of people that's a big hot topic on on you know Fasting will will accelerate this, or you know this type of exercise, or this type of eating uh, helps with with uh, uh, fasting or autophagy. And really, those are inputs for the body to know uh, how many cells to recycle or how many cells to kill, which is apoptosis or autophagy. But it happens only while you sleep. So anything to disturb sleep disturbs that. 
And so it makes you poor at getting rid of cancer cells, essentially, right? That is a big, big deal. Now, other technologies, uh, especially recently on the rise, are more light-based, right? There's uh, showers with special lighting. It's called uh, chromo lighting uh, for specific treatments and stuff like that. The problem is people don't know anything about them. They're just going on the manufacturer's recommendation of, oh, this particular light setup is good for this, and this particular light setup is good for that. And they indiscriminately don't think about the wavelengths of light and how they impact specific cell cycles, specifically blue light. Right. Blue light accelerates aging, accelerates the cell cycle. Right. Um, that's also why dermatology is kind of right and kind of wrong, which is they say that UVA light uh, accelerates aging and then that leads to wrinkles. Um, that's kind of true when it's by itself. The only time that blue light is by itself is in artificial situations because at the same time, you can also go find papers that say that red light, red light therapy helps with wrinkles and reduces aging of the skin. Why is that? It's because red light upregulates ATP production and makes for healthy cellular water. So the cell is now healthy with red light interacting with it. UVA light, blue light, and UVB light accelerate the cell cycle, but it accelerates it in nature in a certain way because UVA, UVB, and blue light only penetrate to certain degrees of your body, and infrared light penetrates uh, almost a foot into your body, so it, it can penetrate basically your whole body. But if you remove the red and only interact with blue, and there's no UVA and UVB, now you have essentially ex uh, only get light that penetrates a certain degree into your body, slightly more than the first few layers, and s significantly less than the red, and that leads to other things. There's been uh, a big, big explosion in uh, psoriasis or psoriasis-like problems, especially in young people, uh, which is basically just skin problems, uh, because they're even coming out with new types of psoriasis, new ways to name them because of how they interact, like what parts of the body and all of that type of stuff. And essentially what, what that tells me is, they are spending a lot of time with artificial light interacting with them. Mm. Give in mind, the reason why I opened with the Wi-Fi is the light doesn't have to be visual light. It can just be artificial light, artificial light of any means. Any kind of um, wireless communication device can induce this effect and start making changes at the skin level. For example, psoriasis, as it's stated in the books, is the growth of the mid layer of skin faster than the upper layers of skin. The reason for that is because the upper layers of skin aren't getting stimulated by specific wavelengths of light, specifically UVA and UVB, UVB being the dominant source. We know this for 100% fact almost 100 years ago, a little over 100 years ago, in the early 1900s, they already knew this. They already had a treatment for psoriasis, and that was UVB light specifically. They knew they knew so much about it that they knew exactly the nanometers of light, the exact uh, frequency of light, and it's 310 to 312. They even still they still make lights for it, but it's not a popular treatment. It's definitely not recommended to you by your doctor, and it's certainly not recommended to you by your dermatologist because they believe that UVB light damages your skin, but they don't understand that. Your skin and your whole body is layers, right? Specific layers of your body are operating at a different uh, time scale than others, right? Uh, just like the universe, right? The time, right, one day on Mars is not the same as one day on Earth because the distance is different. Right? It's no different than the distance of the top layer of skin to the distance of the bone in the middle. To, to me and you, that looks like inches, but at the cellular level, that's miles, that's hundreds of miles apart. That means that there's gonna be a completely different time scale at different layers, just from the top layer of skin on your forearm to the middle part in the bone right here, when it, when it comes to all the cells involved there. So how do they keep in sync? They keep in sync because short wavelengths that are gonna interact at the top layer, are way more powerful. They deliver way more energy. And longer wavelengths that penetrate much deeper are uh, more powerful in a sense of they move more mass, but they're not as powerful in the terms of the radiation that they deliver. So that's why biology on this planet develops and grows in the manner that it does because it's been grown by sunlight, all of it, plant matter, 
is the first life forms on this planet and they grow by sunlight and all other more complex organisms that eat the plants also develop and grow through the same stimulus so back to the psoriasis story if you interact with a lot of artificial light and you never get any uva uva and uvb light on your skin the first layers of skin which is where uva and uvb light interact and they don't penetrate much deeper than that that skin is never receiving the proper timing to grow at the correct rate because aging is not let, let's put it this way if you're permanently seven years old that's a bad thing right you're always going to be young you're underdeveloped right so if you if the skin cells on the surface never get uva and uv light they don't age properly right aging is not bad right like the, the term aging especially when it comes out of a dermatologist or being pitched to women about how to take care of the skin you don't want your age your skin to age i'm like no you want it to age you want it to age appropriately because if it doesn't you end up with a certain problems like psoriasis where the middle layer of skin is growing at the at an accelerated rate and the upper layer of skin is growing at a decelerated rate because it's not receiving the right inputs from light so now you end up with psoriasis or other other problems with like uh especially at openings like orifices uh like your eyes and things of that nature you'll have skin that grows uh basically inadequately it's growing at different layers are growing at a rate that's not proper to other layers because it's not relieving or it's not receiving uh full sunlight spectrum this brings me to kind of like uh, something i have noticed a lot is that a lot of girls uh have this like a, a puffy look over their eyelids and from what you are explaining it might be because they are waking up they are getting their ring light or whatever the hell there is that they use to kind of treat their face with makeup and whatnot. It's a very popular thing to do. And when they put that makeup on, they go outside, they don't get that correct light interaction. And to me, it almost brings back memories to when I was growing up and technology in my country was way behind any other country because we were just separated from Soviet Union. Women rarely wore any makeup. Mm -hmm. There have been like these... Uh, Surveys. They are classed as top three best looking women in a, on a planet. Mm -hmm. They don't wear mm -hmm. any makeup. Whereas now I go back home and I start seeing that they are kind of more inclined into getting more makeup and this and that. And then they don't look anywhere near as healthy as they used to look like. Could that be linked to advancements in technology and misusing technology and kind of getting away from exposing themselves to nature as much? Yeah, absolutely. And, and, and not just, it's exactly that. And it's probably being caused more by the advancement of technology than the unexposure of nature, because everybody seems to think that they go outside. The problem is just like you said, Hey, if the first thing you did is put makeup on and you go outside, that makeup is, uh, in fact, most makeups are designed not to let sunlight interact with your skin. That's the whole point of, of a lot of them. They, um, I, I would say that almost 90% of makeups have some level of UV protection built into them, whether you know it or not, uh, because of the, the, per, the particular um, metals that they use in them. Uh, as far as so even if the makeup doesn't say it has uv protection it has some re reflectivity that does not allow uvb and uva light because uva and uvb light cannot penetrate your body very much it's literally millimeters right so if you have anything on the surface of your skin that's going to mess with that you're not going to get that proper stimulation on those first layers of skin and then uh, coincidentally, something that's that's been that's a technology advancement that a lot of that's kind of popular right now is built in LED lights into the mirrors, right? So it's like a touchscreen mirror that you can touch, and then all of a sudden the whole mirror kind of has built in LEDs that shine on you. Um, that would probably be one of the more detrimental things. If that's the first thing you're doing in your bathroom, right? You you wake up, you go to the bathroom, and you start getting ready. And the, and the light that you turn on is something that's going to shine directly into your eyes, directly onto your skin, and directly onto your face and stimulate uh, the, 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 the growth of the deeper layers of skin and not the upper layers of skin. And more importantly, it's missing infrared. Mo a lot of these things wouldn't be happening nearly as much if the lighting environment actually took into account infrared light 
and gave the, the tissues the ability to make ATP at an accelerated rate like they should be whenever you go out in the sun, right? Like that is about, probably one of the major uh, things. What about getting a good uh, red light therapy box and installing it in a makeup room or whatever? And yeah, you... that would be that would be extremely beneficial. And, and that's what I'm saying. Like, it's not even that 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 technology is out to kill you. It's that nobody's teaching anybody about these things of how different light spectrums do different things. And if you are consistently abusing one light spectrum, you're consistently setting yourself up in a dysregulated state at the cellular level. So yes, the answer to your question is, is 100% that. It's not so much that you gotta remove the technology that, that exists right now, it's that you almost have to add, especially when it comes to lights, you almost have to add back in what they're removing. Um, and, and, and one of those is infrared and red light spectrum. It's the antidote actually to all of the, the, the light spectrum. If you look at the, at the solar spectrum, right, with the spectroscope, uh, you can actually see that. Most of it, more than about 60% of the light that's shining on me right now out from the sun is actually red and infrared. The rest of the 40% is the combination of the other uh, rainbows, uh, colors of the rainbow, and a little bit of UVA and UVB. So out in nature, you get maybe 20 to 30 percent of blue and UVA and UVB, and the other 70 to 80 percent are red in, in, in dominance, red and infrared. And so when you take that and put it in an in indoor environment, people are actually cutting out about 70 percent or 80 percent of the potential frequencies that interact with your body that do things. Right? If that's the major part of the light spectrum that evolution has used uh, to govern uh, uh, biology on this planet, and you all of a sudden now start cutting it out in the last, I don't know, 30 years, right? Because it hasn't been that long, right? We, we've only had electricity for about 100 years. We've only had light at night for about 70 years. And most of that time in the last 70 years, has actually been still with infrared light because incandescent light bulbs put off red and infra, infra, uh, infrared light. That's why they get hot. In my countries, they probably changed around 15 years ago. Yeah, so, so, yeah. For, for most people, that change has only happened in the last 20 years of z zero infrared in the, in the home, even when your lights were on at night, right? And so that's the biggest biggest catapult in the last 20 years where cells now start to get dysregulated and they set you up Go i ahead. have a question for you is there a difference in how this affects genders yes yes definitely so men will will experience less infertility and sexual problems than women because women are a environmental sensor right so if they're consistently sensing an environment that's poor for biology they will become infertile faster okay they'll they'll, ha they'll struggle with con conception and being able to carry a child to full term that's actually what, we see, what we've seen in the last 20 years the the ability for women to get pregnant and carry a child to full term has gotten worse not better even though our lifestyles have gotten better if you could say right um as far as like technical physical stress and and stuff like that but as far as stress that's being sensed by your cells it's gotten worse so yes women are way more susceptible to that um men are more susceptible to uh being inherited a uh, defect so let me explain that your mitochondria comes from your mother my mitochondria comes from my mother right so men start to see an explosion of they are born with an illness or a genetic defect and women start to be the infertile ones because of how that works right so women that do carry a child to full term and full and and, and you know pass on their their genetic makeup to to the next generation that generation gets born with defects much more prominently and men tend to take the brunt of that because we only have our mitochondria directly from our mothers whereas females um, will also get their mitochondria from from their mother but they also have two x chromosomes so they they end up being um, a little bit more susceptible to just carrying on without the the, the genetic mutation at birth that, that alone kind of gives me an idea for a completely different podcast but uh, 
uh, disregarding all that, I'm not even going to open the questions there. Uh, uh, what about technologies that help us? You know, sleep trackers, uh, maybe some kind of uh, smart uh, kitchens that tell you, hey, these are the nutrients in your fridge. These are the good things. These are the bad things and whatnot. If we can somehow mitigate, we, we know we can, the exposure to all these Wi-Fi kind of influences, uh, what's happening there? So what do we have available for us now that can enhance quality of our lives that we see and maybe something coming up in the future? What do you see is the most common now that can improve all yeah. big time? Yeah, so the thing that I like is the personal tracker concept, right? Like the Fitbit, the Aura Rings, those things. The The problem is they're, they kind of started in the right place, which is the ability to track heart rate, the ability to track sleep. But that's not actually what's governing the correct thing, right? Like those are great like feedbacks. But the problem is, for example, if all of a sudden you start getting sleep, uh, poor sleep scores or you just chronically always get poor sleep scores from, from any of these trackers, the trackers are just telling you that. But nothing is actually telling you how to improve it, right? Like they kind of do, but it's the, it's the same centralized BS of, whatever a doctor might tell you. Oh, you know, you got to de-stress a little bit. You got to pull back on. I'm like, yeah, but that's not really what governs sleep, right? Because deep sleep is governed by melatonin and melatonin production is governed by how much ROS the mitochondria has made, period. That's how melatonin works. Um, and the thing that governs ROS is how much infrared light has penetrated into the cell, how much UV light has penetrated into the cell. And the mitochondria appropriately makes the right amount of reactive oxygen species to be able to tell later at night how much damage cellularly is in your body, in all of your cells. We're not just talking your skin and your, your eyes. We're talking about your heart, your lungs, your, your kidneys, etc. Those all have to be turned over and either killed, right, still suicide, or repaired, a, autophagy and a, apoptosis, which is, you know, how we open. Anything that messes with sleep messes with those. So anything that improves sleep improves those so the what i would like a tracker a future device would be something that actually is able to tell you how much uva uva uvb and infrared light have actually interacted with the surfaces on your body i i do think that in, and, and again, they've done studies on this because um, I actually recently read a paper on um, psychiatric disorders, all of them, like uh, schizophrenia and all of this type of stuff. And the, the specific study was done on how does light and dark affect those disorders? Now, in that, uh, you know, the, the, the outcome was actually quite stunning. Um, I'll briefly explain it. Any psychological disorder was improved with darkness at night and starting reversal so signs of reversal when they combine darkness at night with lots of sunlight during the day now that wasn't really the interesting part that i found the interesting part is they put sensors on the people's back of their hands to figure out how much sunlight they were getting. So it wasn't self-reported. It was an actual sensor on the back of somebody's hand that they carried out for, I think they did it for two weeks and then they pulled the sensor off and then they just extrapolated the data, right? But that type of technology is going to be extremely, extremely helpful. And it's probably already capable of being built into a Fitbit, into a Aura Ring. They're, the companies are just not concentrating on it, right? Because that's actually how you're going to improve sleep. And imp when you improve sleep, you improve psych psychiatric disorders. Like, like that paper literally wrote out the thesis of, hey, any psychiatric disorder, we seem to get a benefit the moment we start cutting off light at night. And we start to see reversal markers when we start getting com the combination of cutting off light at night and increasing sunlight in in during the day um so those types of devices i i think they already are capable of doing it it's just a matter of including the sensors in them and then teaching people how to read that like that's a beneficial thing that's not really going to happen until until you start uh convincing uh people that sun is is not a bad thing right like 
that's when people will seek out these types of technologies for sure. Now, other now technologies in your home, right? Like you mentioned, like like a, a scale that tells you the new, you know, you type in, oh, I'm I'm weighing, you know, broccoli. You know, and you put, you know, 100 grams of broccoli in there, and then the skin, the scale spits out the micronutrients and all that. Those are awesome. Like I don't think that there's anything wrong with those. I just think that those are kind of majoring in the minors uh, for something that's going to do much more for you. If you are, if you have metabolic problems, right? If, right. if you're already very fit, if you already do a lot of the things that we talk about, yeah, those types of things like a, a scale with, with uh, nutrients spit out and stuff like that. Those are, those are going to be a extremely facilitating, right? That's what they're doing. They're facilitating the things that we already do, getting good nutrition, getting good uh, activity outside and stuff like that. But the activity outside and getting the right environmental stimulus, that's lacking for the, for the general population. That is one of the major things. You touched a little bit on emotional kind of side. And what uh, kind of interests me, is there some kind of things that we can create at home that can improve our mental well-being? Because we know everyone is stressed out and whatnot. And in previous episodes, you touched about a little bit human resolution and whatnot. Is there something that we can create in a house where we play around with more <coughs> sounds, lights, and whatnot to de-stress us? Yes, absolutely. Um, and so some people have already experienced this whenever they've gone into uh, an appropriately built massage room or an appropriately built uh, uh, acupuncture room. And that is this. You want, number one, lighting is the most important in any of these rooms. If, if, you, if you haven't cued in on that, it is. The dimmer the lighting, the more amber or red the lighting is going to improve relaxation, especially when absent of uh, UV, uh, uh, not UV, but uh, blue light or uh, LED lighting that's very aggressive, very white or blue. You remove those and you bump up the infrared spectrum and the red spectrum. Number two, sounds. Water, water sounds are extremely soothing to the human body because they have to do especially if it's real water like a real uh, it doesn't have to be big just real water that's falling actually creates uh, an electron flow at that current environment because water donates electrons so you know uh it does like i said it, it can be literally a small water fixture you know that's just dripping water that you can hear in the background that goes a very very long way and uh aromatherapy uh, aromatherapy in terms of smells that you would normally smell in nature pine uh uh, what's a, another popular one? Mint, things of that nature, things that are uh, any citrus smell is also going to be beneficial. And the reason for that is because those are smells that, and and we actually haven't really talked about this. Smells are not uh, how would I say like a lock and key mechanism. Smells are actually a frequency, just like hearing is, just like uh, touches. Touches a frequency. You're you're going to be interacting with specific frequencies when you induce the correct sounds and the correct smells combined with the correct frequency of light. Those are the three things that I would say you can cue in in uh, immediately that's very low hanging fruit that doesn't take any anything really special. Um, anybody could put this together with just by going to a, uh, a, a Walmart and, and getting a small water attraction, getting some some uh, different colored light bulbs and then some some scented oils, right? That's very low hanging fruit make a room for de-stressing that. Now, in terms of you live in the city and you, uh, you know, you're, you're just, not, don't get good sleep, right? Things of that nature that I would get into is making a room in your home that's actually protected from the external environment and can potentially be regulated um, temperature-wise, meaning that you can make it very cold. Right now, as far as like protecting it from the other environments uh, or from all environments, uh, that's actually a lot simpler to do because we already know how to do that. Um, any imaging center, right? Like if you go to a center that does x-rays and MRIs and stuff like that, those walls, the drywall specifically is special. That drywall has lead lining, right? So it's a lead lined drywall. So it will not let x-rays or anything penetrate through that wall um, it's a little bit expensive but it's readily available it's commercially available anybody can buy it um, and that's actually what i'm employing in my mechanical room in my home so my electricity that's coming into my home my my any any 
technology that's coming into my home, it's going to come into my mechanical room. My mechanical room will have all the walls lead line drywall and the up the the upper part lead line drywall. So any of the electromagnetic field in that mechanical room cannot expe- escape that mechanical room. You can do it in reverse, right? So you can build a room that doesn't let anything in. So now you can walk into that room and it's completely quiet in terms of electromagnetic field footprint. And then you design it with a little bit of a special lighting, a little bit of, of uh, uh, therapy and things of that nature. And bonus points, if you ground that room, the, the whatever you're walking on in that room, that would be the biggest bonus points because then at that point you're grounded. You don't have any electromagnetic field inter- interacting with you and you input the things that you're missing. Uh, infrared light, for example, uh, having a small infrared panel in there, uh, having some some water therapy and aromatherapy going on. That would be the ultimate relaxation room where you can quiet every input that cells are paying attention to and actually input the ones that you really want. Can you overdo the infrared? Um, from artificial sources, the answer would probably be yes. The way I'm looking uh, at it, if somebody is listening to this and they own a place where they are treating people all the time, and they might end up spending their like six, seven, eight hours at a time. Yes, you, you, yeah, yeah, I see what you're saying. Yes, yes, you can overdo uh, infrared therapy when it's coming from an artificial source. The reason for that is the same reason that we opened this up, right? There are other frequencies other than the infrared from sunlight. If you only isolate one, then you're going to end up with another problem, right? And and we kind of know this from a nutrition and fitness perspective as well, right? If you only eat steak, you're going to run into an issue eventually, right? Like, I, I know that that's a big thing right now, but you will run into an issue. There's no doubt about it. If you only ate meat, you'll run into an issue. If you only eat plants, eventually you run into an issue. Um, it's it's no different in this. Uh, so so in terms of, of these people, uh, you know, that, that work in these facilities that for treatment and stuff like that, or, or build us a facility kind of like what I'm talking about, could you get too much? Yes, the answer is you probably could, but it would take much longer, much longer than you would think because the, infra, the spectrum from sunlight is so dominant in red. Um, but the, the real issue would be the intensity. That's why I'm saying from, a, from an artificial standpoint, an artificial red light standpoint, they're designed to be very intense because they're trying to be a therapy box, right? A therapy light. So that um, all you would do is turn down the intensity and then you probably wouldn't run into an issue. For example, something that I'm doing in my home, uh, my, my normal lighting is actually going to be uh, uh, like a retrofit incandescent light bulb. You can't really buy a lot of incandescent light bulbs right now, but they are coming out with a LED and ballast hybrid. Ballast meaning it's a it's an element in the bulb that heats up and creates heat and creates infrared light. So those are the lights that I'm going to have in my home. I can have those on. They're very low. They're not that intense, right? So you can have those on all the time and be completely fine. I'm basically adding in the infrared spectrum to an LED light bulb um, to those. So an infrared therapy box is something I probably wouldn't have on all the time, uh, at least not for, you know, six, seven hours, like you mentioned. But an hour or two, you're probably not going to notice a, a, a big a detriment. Um, unless you have it right, you know, six inches away from you. I, I wouldn't recommend that because it's too intense. Um, so uh, nice. following up on all this, uh, what about some technologies that we can use to enhance our energy efficiency maybe? You know, like we have these Wi-Fi controlled uh, thermometers that we can control heat in our house and whatnot. Is there anything that we can kind of see and use in our advantage to improve that, improve energy efficiency of the house, maybe even water supply, saving some water here and there, then so on and so forth. Yeah, so the, the biggest thing is, uh, you know, everybody's trying to build net zero homes or, or they're not even trying to, they're, they're being told to by governments, hey, the next generation of homes need to be net zero so they can be very, very energy efficient and those types of things. I don't necessarily see a problem with that. The problem is too much isolation, like to the point where you're now not even be able to be grounded properly in the home. And... Uh, some of that also involves the windows themselves being ultra filtering in other words they only let blue light through and they don't let any infrared through so they don't heat up the home and things of that nature those types of technologies i would say 
they're great for energy efficiency. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with them, but you're going to need to find a way uh, uh, the, to allow proper UV spectrum and UV light into the home so that the more time you spend in the home because it's very comfortable, you don't neglect the infrared light than the UV light that needs to come in. A simple technology that already currently exists are skylights and sun tubes. Those let light into the home from above. The problem is nobody's talking about how the glass filters the light. Just changing just those lights, the glass in those lights, the skylights or the sun tubes to something like quartz uh, will allow full spectrum sunlight through. Doing that specifically in one room, like in the middle of a home or something like that, as a treatment room, that would be a very, very beneficial technology to employ in new home building or even retrofit. These can be retrofitted as well to any home, uh, sun tubes and skylights. Um, the other thing that you mentioned that I actually do like, the ability to control the temperature or automate temperature in specific rooms is a big, big deal. Um, especially the bedrooms, being able to automate that the whole room gets cold would be extremely beneficial and improve sleep. It doesn't, and, and again, we already know this, right? Hey, you improve sleep if you bring the, the temperature of a room down to like 66, 65. We know this, we see this from data and studies. Well, if you have a smart home and you can automate temperatures independently in room to room, that's a very big benefit and I would lean into that. And then, um, Turning, allowing the temperature to come up as the sunrise is happening will be would be another big benefit for biology uh, because temperature is also uh, electrical in nature. So going all from all of that, it, it almost gives me an idea that if you are living in a house which is fitted out with extremely advanced technology and whatnot, it's not always bad. It's sometimes really good. We have touched up in one of those episodes how we can increase your creativity and whatnot. But I would even let me know if it's correct to the way I'm thinking. If you are somebody who's living in a great house with outfitted uh, that has the latest technology in the house, but you always have some kind of chronic illnesses, may it be skin, may it be joint pain, may it be some kind of uh, digestive issues and whatnot, there might be something that you would benefit from looking into if your house is up to, let's say, jacked with technology. Yes, absolutely. Uh, absolutely. It, it would be one of those things where I would even go into the home and be like, you know, th that this is where a meter, an actual meter would be very, very beneficial where you could just go because even with with really highly outfitted uh, homes, um, there's going to be a place in the home that's not highly outfitted. It could be a garage, it could be a basement room somewhere there. And you could find that with the meter of like, oh, there isn't that much uh, electromagnetic field simulation in this room. And then just spend some time in that room, take a nap in that room, see how how well you sleep, that sort of stuff. Those would be good hacks. But yes, if you're somebody with a very high end uh, smart home or whatnot, you would greatly benefit from looking into this if you have issues like you just described. They just kind of are always around. Awesome, David. Appreciate your time as usual. And I'll see you next video. Awesome. Thank you very much.